Hello, my fellow Chef Knives enthusiasts. Thank you all again for watching. If you want my channel to exist, please support it, subscribe, push that like button, comment. That definitely would help stimulate me to make more content for the knife community. In this video, I'm going to show you my Shibata Kutetsu 210mm Gyuto. It's a very thin lasery knife. If you like those, you better keep watching this video. These SG2 R2 knives are made by young bladesmith Takayuki Shibata, working out of his shop in Fukuyama City, Hiroshima, Japan. I love Japan! This is called the Kutetsu. The name Kutetsu comes from the first Japanese ironclad ship. Kutetsu translates to ironclad, which was the name given to the first ironclad battleship in the Japanese Navy. It had a very distinctive painted bow, which allowed it to carve through water with ease and efficiency. Hence the nickname battleship for these knives. These first line of Shibata kitchen knives have a very distinct philosophy, which probably is best explained by the master himself. In my kitchen I was using a Gyuto knife. It was a beautiful knife, but it was a little too curved for my liking. Didn't make enough contact with the food, so I switched to a straight edge Nakiri. Better for chopping vegetables. But when I was cutting meat, then I wanted to go back to my Gyuto. Hmm, I thought. Somebody should make a new type of knife, one that falls between a Gyuto and a Nakiri. And then, as I am a knife maker, I thought that I should make it. So I did. I gave it a slightly curved edge. Too straight produces too much friction. Too curved reduces contact with the food. This slight curve is my attempt at a happy medium. I also gave it a sharp point and this is very nice for scoring vegetables or squid or chicken. The spine of the knife has a very high mirror polish. This maximizes friction between your fingers and the blade for better control, comfort and safety. The sides of the knife have a rough finish to minimize friction between the food and the blade. This is especially noticeable with foods that have a high water content. My knife's rough sides break up the water's surface tension, allowing the blade to slide through more easily. I think it was a pretty good story. What do you think about this story? So I think that's an interesting philosophy by Shibata. I am very much a Nakiri lover because of this flat profile, this flat edge, so you never lose contact with the produce and the cutting board. But yeah, sometimes you need a little bit of a curved belly to do some other stuff, maybe rock a little bit. So I get where he's coming from and I think it's an interesting point that he makes. There are not a lot of knives out there with this really straight yet slightly curved profile. So I was really interested in trying out this profile when I found out about these knives and especially since they are also very lasery knives and I kind of like my knives thin. The knife weighs 140 grams. The blade length is 211 millimeters. So it's not 210 millimeters, but 211 millimeters. They have a distinct and beautiful profile and razor sharp cutting edge. And the fit and finish are of the highest standards. The blade is attached to a lovely octagonal rosewood handle and Pekka wood ferrule. This really nice curved choil definitely is kind to your middle finger when having a pinch grip and having to do a lot of prep. It's definitely comfortable. But beware of this heel because this heel is almost like you have a tip on the back of your knife as well. I mean, of course, it's not a K-tip uh, shape, but since the choil curves and actually curves all the way backwards. Now, if you're not careful, this could hurt you. They are made very, very, very thin. Laser thin.
This Kotetsu Gyoto is so thin, it is actually the thinnest knife in my collection. I also have this Yukurusaki Hawao Gyuto 240mm, which I thought was already really, really thin. Definitely a laser, but if you look at them next to each other, you can see that the Kotetsu is maybe even thinner. The Kotetsu has a little bit more of a convex grind, but it's so, so, so thin behind the edge. The Yukurusaki is less convex, also really thin behind the edge. A little bit taller, of course, because it's a 240mm Gyuto, but yeah, the Kutetsu is definitely a little bit thinner. I also have a Takeda, which is also definitely a very thin knife. A completely different grind altogether, with more like a S type of grind. But as you can see, the Kutetsu is definitely the knife with the thinnest edge of these three lasers. Wait, why are you cutting cabbage with this knife? That's way too easy. This cabbage is no contest for this Kutetsu. It was just that I had to cut a couple of these. So I did it, but the Kutetsu is like laughing in the face of this cabbage. It's like, is this all you got? This is boring, I'm just gonna lick myself. The out-of-the-box sharpness of this Kutetsu is definitely ample to go through the skin of a bell pepper. I am not using any down force, I'm not pushing on the knife at all, I'm just moving it forwards and it just glides through the skin of this bell pepper. It feels like it's not even there, it's like I'm cutting air. This aggressive looking K-tip or bow on this knife definitely is sharp. The flat profile on the back of this knife definitely mimics the profile of a Nakiri. So you have full contact with the board and no harmonica cuts whatsoever. The carrot is of course a very hard and dense produce. I try to go through it without using any force. And uh, yeah, it definitely does glide through a carrot without wedging or anything as well. With very dense produce like this, of course, you gotta be a little bit careful. You know, if you make a wrong move, uh, you will damage the knife. I hardly ever Got Brunois style because I actually never need it in my kitchen and with my menu. But yeah, since I'm cutting a carrot, let's see if I can make a nice little Brunois out, out of this. I guess a French chef would not be too happy with my Brunois, but yeah. I'm just showing you quickly that this knife is definitely able to pull it off. And mind you, I almost never do this. So if you don't like my Brunois, it's not the knife, it is me. Yeah, you fucked up! Sweet potato, just like a carrot of course. Very dense and thick, uh, hard produce. No problem whatsoever. It doesn't wedge at all, it just glides through it like it's not even there. Shallots! Definitely a produce that I cut a lot. Usually just need really thin slices as part of the topping of some of my dishes. Ooh we I must say that yeah, uh, next to my Nakiri Denka, with this knife I could really really make thin thin slices of this shallot. Amazing. 
I think you need more practice with this knife. I'm not impressed. So, what is my experience with this knife? The first thing that comes to mind that this is a really thin, light, nimble knife made for precision cutting, made for cutting efficiency. It is balanced perfectly at the pinch grip. It definitely came razor sharp out of the box, which one might expect from a Shibata knife, since he is probably one of the best sharpeners out there. It has flawless fit and finish. It almost looks like it is factory made, basically. I can't really fault anything on this knife. So yeah, fit and finish, nothing wrong with it. It is definitely not a showpiece knife. I mean, I have quite a few knives, you know, that will start conversations uh, way easier and faster just based on their looks. But the art of this knife uh, and the beauty of this knife is all about that profile and geometry of the blades. The profile being really flat at the bottom, you know, at the heel, really flat like a nakiri, and then this really slight little curve. So this hybrid between a gyuto and a nakiri, and the very, very thin lasery geometry with a really subtle convex grind and this rough finish on the blade, helping the food release a little bit. So yeah, art over beauty in just from the perspective of performance and precision and efficiency, that's the beauty of this knife. If you're looking for a knife that you can cut really precise with, that you can cut really effortlessly with, and you feel confident wielding a very thin lasery knife, having control over uh, all the basic cutting techniques, then this knife really allows your knife skills to shine. Man, dare I say it, there is almost none better performing knife than the Shibata Kutetsu. So this is definitely a delicate knife. You should use it and not abuse it. The knife feels so super light and nimble. You can do very, very precise cuts. And if you're skilled enough, you can do things very quickly as well because it just flies through everything. With a knife like this, you are not struggling or battling uh, with, for example, a chili pepper, you are just tickling it or caressing it. It's, it, just, it just glides through anything. It's just a great feel and so clean and precise. So, what's the end verdict then? This is not a knife for beginners. This is a knife for grown-ups. I don't want to talk down to anybody. I'm just saying, this is definitely not a knife for a beginner. You gotta be sure about your skills. You gotta be confident holding a knife. You gotta be experienced with cutting a lot of different produce. Then this knife will be a fantastic blade, a very versatile, fantastic blade. I personally like laser knives. What's not to like about them? Personally, it was not very difficult for me to get used to this knife, but I can imagine that if you only own like maybe two or three knives, which, you know, are not even similar to this type of knife yeah it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to and you want to be sure that you know how to use a thin laser blade like this because it's very fragile if you don't know what you're doing if you don't have natural control over basic cutting techniques then in my humble opinion you have no business buying this knife I mean I don't want to brag about my nice skills or talk down to anyone else. It's just a honest advice to avoid any accidents. So at the end of the day, I would not recommend this knife to someone that is not confident and not skilled enough with basic cutting techniques. Definitely not as your first Japanese knife. I think I can't stress that enough. I think it's nice to end with a quote of Shibata-san himself. In my kitchen and in my workshop, I am always thinking about you, my customer. I hope that my knives will surprise and delight you. May your cooking life be enriched with loving thanks from my kitchen to yours, Shiba. Of course, 
it sounds like a sales pitch, but yeah, in this case, I think it's genuine and heartfelt. I think that was it. 